Welcome to the fifth lesson in this course. In this video, we'll learn more about the different types of Stripe user accounts. We'll even see some examples of how to create or connect accounts using the Stripe Marketplace token element. So let's get into this lesson. As mentioned in previous lessons, Stripe has two main types of user accounts, customer and seller accounts. But seller accounts are further divided into three types standard accounts, express accounts, as well as custom accounts. But we'll now further break down the difference between these types of seller accounts. So here is a table that will give us an overview of how these seller accounts are different. Regarding fees, there are no fees that you'll need to pay to Stripe when using standard seller accounts. However, there are platform fees involved when using express or custom accounts. But what about customization? This refers to the ability to customize certain things. For example, this includes the onboarding, the dashboard, and payment schedules, just to mention a few. So standard accounts don't have a lot of options with regards to customization, but Express accounts do have some level of customization. But sellers will still use Stripe's onboarding and dashboard when using Express accounts. But with custom accounts, as the name suggests, you have the ability to customize a lot of things such as developing your own custom dashboard for sellers. And regarding management, a lot of admin is done for you when using standard and express accounts. So they are more easier to integrate and administrate. But since custom accounts offer a white label solution that gives you total control over the user experience, most of the admin will be performed by you. So in summary, these are the differences between these types of seller accounts. But it's worth pointing out that out of all these types of accounts, Express accounts are more simple and quick to implement, and it includes more simplified options. So it's a good option for busy people who don't want to bother with a lot of details. So now that we've described these types of accounts, we'll now see examples of connecting and creating these types of seller accounts. Let's start with looking at an example of the process of onboarding or connecting a standard account. We'll then see how the workflows are set up. So on the demo page, we can start the process by clicking on the connect button. We've now been redirected to this page. In live mode, a user will have to fill in the form and click on the continue button. But for test purposes, we'll just skip this form by clicking on this button that says skip this form. We've now been redirected back to the demo page. And as this pop-up shows, a standard seller account was connected successfully. Now let's look at the workflows within the bubble editor to see how everything is set up. So when the connect button is clicked, you can see that we're using the action connect express or standard account. And within this action, there are simple fields that have been set up. And since the redirect URI is the demo page, that is why we were redirected back to the demo page when we were connecting the standard account. But if this field is left empty, the URI you've inserted in your Stripe dashboard will be used, as was shown in lesson three. But you may be wondering how to find this action called Connect Express or Standard Account. Well, there are two ways that you can use. Firstly, you can click to add an action and then go to Plugins. Then scroll to find this action within this list. Alternatively, you can use the second way, where you click to add an action and then type connect within the search box. And the action will come up as a search result. Let's now look at an example of connecting an express account. After that, we'll again see how the workflows are set up. So when you click on the connect button on the demo page for an express account, we are redirected to the Stripe hosted page and the seller will need to fill in his information. But for the phone number field, we can use the test phone number since this is just an example. Here, we can also use the test code. After that, the seller will be requested to fill in his personal details. Afterwards, the seller will need to insert the requested business details. Next, the seller will have to submit his banking details in order to get payouts, 
but we can use a test account. Finally, the seller will have to submit the details to complete the process. Again, we've now been redirected back to the demo page with this notification that a seller account has been connected successfully. And now that we have an Express account created, we can scroll down on the demo page where we can create a dashboard link for the Express account. And as you can see, we are redirected to the Stripe hosted dashboard page. And we can click skip for now to go to the dashboard. And here is a simple Stripe hosted dashboard for sellers who have an Express account. Here, they will be able to see the payouts as well as the account information. Let's now have a look at the bubble editor to see the workflows for connecting an Express account. So when the connect button is clicked, you can see that again, we're using the action connect Express or standard account. And within this action, the relevant fields have been set up. But this time around, the account type is set to an Express account. And the redirect URI is the demo page as we had it before. We'll now see a demo example of creating a customer seller account. Afterwards, we'll have a look at the workflows. So we can click on the button that says try demo to start the process. Here, the seller will need to fill in the required fields. And after clicking the button that says create Stripe account, the seller dashboard will be presented and the seller will be able to see his or her account details. But it's important to remember that you need to develop all the necessary UI elements, such as the forms, the buttons, etc., and conditions in Bubble, and then set the plugin features. For example, both the form we've just used to sign up and the seller dashboard that you currently see on the screen were first custom developed in Bubble, and conditions were placed so that after the seller clicks the button on the sign up form, then this seller dashboard will be shown. But let's now check the workflows to see how a custom seller account is created. So this is where the Stripe Marketplace token element comes in. As you can see here, a token element called seller has been placed on the page. We simply named it like this in the demo so that it's easier to identify a token element from other token elements since you can have multiple of them placed on the page. But you can also rename token elements in your Bubble app in the way that suits you best. But why are we placing this token element on the page? Well, as mentioned in a previous lesson, the documentation shows that you just have to place the Stripe Marketplace token on the page and call it from within the workflow when you are trying to convert a form into the token. And we would like to convert this form into a bank account token so that a seller gets created with his associated banking details. So when the button that says create Stripe account is clicked, you can see that there's an action that creates a bank account token using some of the information that's been captured by the form. And the element that's linked to this action is the Stripe Marketplace token that was named seller, which is the one that was placed on the page. But in order to create the actual seller account, an additional event is used. As you can see here, there's an event that gets triggered when a bank account token is created. And this event is also linked to the same token element. And within this event, there's an action that creates the actual seller account. And when you look within this action, you can see numerous fields have been set up. But most importantly, the bank account token field is assigned to the token that was created using the create bank account action. And just like that, a seller account gets created along with its associated banking information. So we've looked at examples of creating the different types of seller accounts. But what about creating a customer account? So let's start with having a look at an example of creating a customer account. Afterwards, we'll check the workflows. So to create a customer account, you can have a user submit a form that captures the customer's card details. This way, a customer account will be created with the default payment method. And after the user submits the form, a customer account will be created with its associated card details. And the customer will now be able to make payment. But how is this all set up in the workflows? Let's have a look. So when this button is clicked, we are using the action that creates a card token. And this action is linked to a token element, which is this one placed on the page. 
We renamed it as Stripe Marketplace Token Customer, but of course, you can rename elements in your own app based on what works for you. You can also see that all the fields within this action have been completed with the details captured by the form. But to complete the process of creating a customer account, we also use an additional event, which is this one. And do take note that this event is linked to the same token element. And within this event, we have an action that creates the actual customer account. And it only requires three fields, the full name, email, and payment source, which we provide by inserting the card token we created in the previous event. In addition, you'll need to store the customer ID using the ID found in step one. And finally, you'll also need to store the card ID using the card ID of the token element. You'll notice that for the demo app, we are storing this information using custom states. But in a live app, you may want to store the customer ID and the card ID into the actual database. As a side note, you can find this form on the demo website by clicking on the Try Demo button under Stripe Custom Account. Afterwards, you need to click the button that says Create Stripe Account. Once the page has loaded, scroll down and click the Continue button. Afterwards, this form will be visible. And that concludes Lesson 5. In the next lesson, we'll dig deeper in Stripe Checkout. We'll see examples of the types of payments we can create with it, and we'll also see how to set up its workflows so that you can get a better understanding of it. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.